tell you that, that God looks at what's on the inside? And, and can I tell you this also? That it's, it's, if we're doing the things that we know to do right, that are in the Word of God, and doing it for our own glory, it's for the wrong purpose, and God's going to see that. So, first of all, I believe that this church was not doing the things that they did, their words, for their own glory, but they were doing it for the glory of God. Yeah. Everything that we do in the kingdom, everything that we do in this life should be so that God can be glorified through us. Amen. That we do things not to attain salvation, but because of salvation. Salvation should change us. Yeah. It shouldn't. We shouldn't remain the same and in the same things that we were in before. Salvation should change us and, and help us to desire to be different, to desire to please God. And we should do things not out of guilt, but out of love. So I think their works have the right motive. Right. And also they had, the Bible says, this church of Philadelphia had kept his word. Now, the word kept means to watch and observe. And the word literally means, and they have kept the word of my patience. Literally, this means is that this church had seen the word, had it preached to them, had meditated on it, and then they had done it. Now, I ask you a question. I hate, I hate to even think that that I would want to make you feel guilty, but I do want you to be convicted of this. If you need to. Somebody had walked out of church, heard something preached that you applied to you, opened up your hands, and then thought, that was for somebody else. You know? <laughs> Anybody? Yes. Well, the human condition, right? And what happens is, we walk out of the doors, and we think, well, I sure hope Kevin got changed in that service. <laughs> Philadelphia had not denied his name. 
stand together as musicians come, shall we? The last verse that I read to you was from Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And this is what it says. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. This church of Philadelphia had something that each one of us in our lives and each church must have. Both sides open. God's opened up his side. No man can shut that side. We've got to open up our side by the things that we do, by the things that we believe, and the things we hold fast in that world. So that there is access. And the Bible says this to the church of Laodicea. That if they would open the door, that he would come in and sup with them, and they with him. All the things that, that Jesus is able to come in. It, the most amazing thing to me is, not only that God would change my life, but that there's something about my life that I can offer to him and feed his soul and right. his spirit. Can you think about this? The God of heaven, with those open doors, is able to enter into this church today. And at the beginning, with our worship and our praise, think about it. Jesus says, well, that feeds me. That fills my soul. That satisfies. God is so well pleased with the life that is given over to me. And when I make my way through my life and do all the things that, that I do for work or, or for visiting or for fellowship or to ministry, and if I do it with the right spirit and attitude, all the things that he wants me to do, this feeds God's soul. Amen. Amen. Jesus said this to a woman he met in Samaria. He stopped by a well. The Bible says he was weary with the journey. He stopped by a well, so his disciples could go in and find meat because he was hungry. And uh, while he was at the well, he began talking to this woman. And she began to respond to the things that he was saying. When his disciples came back, I want you to hear this. When his disciples came back with meat and food for him to eat, he says, I'm not hungry anymore. Right. Where did you eat? He says, I have meat to eat that you want to have. You want to know what satisfies and what means the Lord's soul? It's an individual that will say, God, I want you to use me. God, I'm willing to say yes to you. God, whatever it takes, I want my life to be yours. You want to know something? Jesus walks into a place and he's waiting for, for everybody that's in that place. Say, Lord, here's my man. I want it to be yours. I want you to use me. I want you to have your way inside me. So Jesus says, oh, Lord, that satisfies me. Feeds my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a few moments. I, this last passage of scripture in, in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1 is now referring to an open door that's in heaven. Come on out. Are you waiting for that? Yeah. See, first of all, you've got to transition from that Laodicean church where the door is closed and get it open by becoming a church of Philadelphia. And on the other side of that room, amen, on the other side of the room is another door. And that door is going to take us home. I want to get from that room to this room. Right. And then I want to go to that room.
things that you need to get right to open that door. This altar is open for you to come and pray. We're going to be baptizing Dave in just a little while, but I do want to give everybody the opportunity to open the door. I want God to use me. Amen. In that case, the door is going to be open.